You're so cute, Georgina. Thank you, Teddy. Yes, and your curly hair is so lovely. Thank you, Barbie. Mom, Dad, she's talking to her stuff again. My brother never understood anything, and he was so annoying. But they're talking back. Can't you hear them? Oh my gosh, you're such a weirdo. Mom! I was only about five years old, and for a while, I didn't know that I was the only one who could speak to objects. My parents were worried at first, but then they decided that I was probably going through some weird kind of phase. But I wasn't. In fact, I thought that all the kids could do it. Well, it wasn't like I started the conversations. They were the ones who started talking to me. It wasn't just my teddy and my Barbie. Chairs, bottles, books, walls, trees, almost everything spoke to me. I watched Beauty and the Beast once, and when I saw the talking cup, clock, and candle, I thought that maybe I was normal. But what was wrong with my brother and my parents? Were they just pretending that they couldn't hear them too? Regardless, I was Georgina, the girl who could talk to anything. Keep watching to see how this eventually made my life turn crazy. One day, I decided to ask my best friend at school if the same thing was happening to her. Don't do it, she'll laugh. She won't understand, just be quiet. Peppy, do things talk to you? What do you mean? Like, things without mouths. Like your toys, walls, and even this chair. Did you hear what it just told me? What? I told you she wouldn't understand. Be quiet. Who are you talking to? The chair. Didn't you hear him? Teacher, Georgina is crazy. And that was how I lost my kindergarten best friend. When I learned that I was special, I became very secretive about what I could do since I realized that no one could understand and there was no way to explain it to them. I felt like I was lucky because I'd never be lonely. But sometimes this strange power freaked me out. Imagine going to the bathroom and the toilet goes, hey, what do you think you're doing? Stop that. I had no control over what things said and sometimes I couldn't make them shut up. Then on my 10th birthday, everything stopped. I simply couldn't hear objects anymore. And when I tried talking to them, they wouldn't talk back. I was sad for a while, but I found other things to do. When I started middle school, I became a sort of a social butterfly. I was the leader of several clubs and could always be found doing something positive and constructive. Bake sales to help the homeless, volunteering at animal shelters, cleaning up the park. I was always busy. I had made some great friends too. There was Yvonne, Hermione, and Peyton. We were inseparable, and because we had similar interests, we got along really well. Our friendship continued until we were older and ready for high school. We planned to go to the same one, and the summer before that, we decided to volunteer at a camp for disabled children. It was one of the most inspiring things I'd ever done, and I was really happy for the chance to make a difference in so many children's lives. On the last day of camp, we had a talent show, and the kids' parents came to watch. At the end of the show, a cute old lady approached me with a gift. My daughter Leslie can't stop talking about you. She said that you were one of the best mentors at the camp and that she can't wait to come back next year. You will be volunteering again next year, right? Yeah, sure. I'm so happy she had a great time. Well, here, I brought you a gift. Don't open it until you get home. She winked and then walked away. I put the present in my suitcase and forgot all about it until later when I was unpacking at home. I took it out and put it on my bed. I opened it and cringed. It was a yellow purse and I didn't like yellow at all. Ew, where am I gonna go with this? It's hideous. Um, rude. I nearly fainted. Was I tired? Hallucinating? Maybe I needed some sleep. I wasn't able to get much sleep at the camp after all. Yep, I guess it's bedtime for me. What about me? Could you buy me a pillow and put it on your desk? I want to have a bed too. Since we're best friends now, I'm going to live in your room. Did you really just talk to me? But how is that possible? You're a purse. You don't see me questioning your abilities. Gosh, you're so rude. Anyway, my name is Coralissa. Nice to meet you, Georgina. This is weird. It wasn't weird when you were a child, was it? I know that you could speak to everything. No, I am not going through this again. I grabbed the purse, sped downstairs to the kitchen, and threw it in the trash can. I went back upstairs to my room and fell asleep. The next morning, I woke up, and as soon as I opened my eyes, 
There it was, right next to my head. Good morning, sunshine. Ah! How did you get back here? Aw, oh, come on. Just give me a chance, will you? We would be great friends. Although I was spooked out, I decided to give her a chance. I had one week left before mm -hmm. high school, and I had a whole bunch of things to do, so I decided that it probably wouldn't hurt to bring her with me. She was okay that week, but she told me she wanted to come to school with me the next week. I can give you advice about making new friends and stuff like that. I don't need advice, and I already have friends. I took Coralissa to school with me anyway. Hey, Georgina! We're in high school, girl! I can't believe it! Hey, why do you have that huge yellow purse and a backpack? Um, well, I just had so many things to carry. Can't you get, like, a black one? That yellow is awful! I know, but it's all I have. Cool! Let's find our English class. I went to class with Hermione and figured we'd meet Yvonne and Peyton in the class. Our new English teacher seemed really nice, but midway into her explanation of the syllabus, Coralissa started being annoying. Boring. Be quiet. I should have stayed at home. Stop talking. Young lady, who are you talking to? No one. Sorry, Miss Jones. After class, my friends were looking at me funny, and I was so tempted to throw Carlos into the trash again. Sorry, sorry, friend. I'll make it up to you. It was lunchtime. See that girl sitting over there all alone? Her name is Catherine, and she likes pandas. But she has no friends. Why don't you go sit next to her and talk to her? But I already have friends. Yes, and she doesn't, so be nice. I told my friends I'd be back, and I listened to my purse. Hi, Catherine. My name is Georgina. Is it your first day here? Hi. Yes, it is. But I don't know anyone here. Aw, I'll be your friend. Do you like pandas? I love them. Why don't you come sit over here with me and my friends? Okay. I brought Catherine to our table and introduced her to my friends, and she fit in perfectly. When I got home that afternoon, I was exhausted. If you've been to high school already, you'd know that the first day is tiring as hell. But I was happy with my purse because at least she helped me do a good thing. And it seemed like she wanted to continue the next day too. I was walking through the hallway near the lockers when... Georgie! Don't call me that! Look at that cute guy over there! Go talk to him! No, I don't ever just want to go up to guys and make conversations. That's nuts! And I'm shy. You shy, please. Hurry, do it. I don't know why, but I listened. Hi, my name is Georgina, and I'm new here. What about you? Hi, cutie. I'm a sophomore. I can show you around if you want. Sure. He told me that his name was Elliot, and the more he spoke, the more <laughs> I realized that he was definitely my type. Plus, he was cute. Like, really cute. He took me out the next weekend, and I decided that I just couldn't get enough of him. I wanted to be around him all the time, and before I knew it, my friends were teasing me about having a boyfriend. Although, we never really made it official. So, I guess you're thinking that my talking purse was pretty useful, huh? Well, she was, until she wasn't. I noticed that she was starting to change one Saturday morning when I was walking to the park to see Elliot. There was a little old lady trying to cross the road, and my first instinct is always to help. I started walking over to her to help when... Don't help that old lady! What? Why? I don't like her face. Listen to me or else. Or else what? Corlissa didn't tell me what the consequences were, but I thought that I should probably listen so she wouldn't kill me in my sleep or something. I didn't help the old lady and she was nearly hit by a bus. But she was okay, thankfully. A few days later, I was in the grocery store with my parents. Look at all that chocolate! You're a purse. Why do you care? Steal one. No, I've never stolen anything in my life. Hurry up. Do it. I took a chocolate bar and I hid it in the sleeve of my hoodie. Darling, are you okay? Who are you talking to? My mom asked. Then my little sister started laughing. I don't like that little girl. Why? She's laughing at you. When you guys get back home, I want you to feed her goldfish to the cat. No, that's awful. What's awful, dear? Nothing, Mom. You're so weird. See what I mean? When we got home, I waited until everyone was distracted, somewhere doing something. Then, I took Kayla's goldfish out of the bowl and went looking for the cat. Coralissa was hanging on my arm the whole time. Yes! Yes! I don't know why the purse was so excited about this. 
I found the cat under a tree outside and threw the fish in front of her. She gobbled it up in one bite, and then I looked behind me and I heard a scream. Mommy! Daddy! Georgina fed Freddy to the cat! Mommy! My parents came running out looking bewildered. She did what? No, I didn't. I'd never do something like that. My sister went to her room to check if her fish was still there, and sure enough, it was gone. My parents didn't believe her because I'm an angelic daughter, but I was sure that Kayla would never trust me again. But do you know what? Corellissa kept asking me to do horrible things, and I couldn't say no. She made me cheat on my math test the next week, and this is something I'd never ever done in my entire life. Later that week, she asked me to do the thing that would change the course of my life forever. I want you to go into the computer lab and sabotage everything. Why? Just do it. I waited for everyone to leave school, then I went into the lab and I just began smashing things. I poured water all over the keyboards. I threw the speakers at the monitors. I wrote all over the interactive whiteboard with a black permanent marker. And when I was gone, everything was broken. Every single thing. Good job, Georgina, she said, and we left the room. On Monday the next week, I was taken to the principal's office as soon as I arrived. We know what you did. We have camera footage of everything. It's not my fault. How so? It's my purse. She told me to do it. Your what? It's a talking purse. Her name is Coralissa, and she's been telling me to do bad things. The principal looked at me like I'd just fallen from Mars. My parents were called in, and they both looked like they were about to cry. I explained to them that the purse made me steal chocolate, feed the goldfish to the cat, cheat on the test, and finally break everything in the computer lab. Yes, yeah, so we're thinking she has some serious mental health issues which need to be dealt with immediately. The principal said, and I gasped. There is nothing wrong with me. You don't believe me? She's talking to me right now. They can't hear me, you know. Shut up. Who are you talking to? The purse. I was sent to an institution sometime after. I cried and I cried because I knew that there was nothing wrong with me and that this purse had ruined my life. Before my dad drove me there, I took the purse and I tried to set it on fire, but it wouldn't burn. So I buried it in the hole in our backyard. After spending two weeks on meds at the institution, I woke up one morning and the purse was right in front of my face. Good morning, sunshine. Why don't we break out of this place? I'll explain how. 